Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. We just hit 50,000 subscribers and I'd like to thank each and every one of you. I've been doing this for about a year and a half now, so the fact that we've grown so fast already, it's just amazing to me. So I'd like to thank all of you for helping me get to this milestone. Also, special thanks to Liberal Hivemind because he put the link to my channel on his community tab and told people to subscribe. So that kind of helped us reach the milestone. So I'd like to thank everybody. Um, that helped me get here, and I don't really have anything in store for my 50k special. It was just going to be my election night live stream, and that's still on, so make sure you're here on November 3rd. We're a lot better than watching corporate media break down the election, because unlike these people, I actually know what's going on. But today, we're going to do a Senate election prediction of the 2020 Senate. I filled out all of the safe states here. Yes, that includes Texas. Yes, that includes Alabama. Yes, that includes Kentucky. I don't believe those states really have a real chance at flipping, and I do believe that the Republicans are going to end up winning them by over 10 percentage points in every state. So 43 to 43 is where we're starting off. Um, we're going to go through this map here. We are going to decide which way the states are right now, which way they're going to go, and what's just going to shake down here. So we're going to start with Maine, where Susan Collins is in for the fight of her political life. There's not a whole lot of metrics that favor Collins. I've talked to a couple of people out in Maine that are confident with the Collins campaign, but there's just so much data that goes against Collins. I'm not so sure she's going to be able to pull it off. I think it's going to be very, very close, but I think that she will end up getting screwed in the end by ranked choice voting. And Maine is going to go into the Democrat column, but very, very narrowly, and Collins can win. I just don't happen to see it right now, but you never know. It could happen. Depends on what changes in the race, if anything, within the next three weeks until Election Day. So 44-43 Dems. North Carolina, we talk about what's going on with Cale Cunningham and the big scandals there that are going to affect him because, again, he's running a campaign on decency. It's not like he's running a campaign against political correctness like Trump because that kind of allowed Trump to evade scandal. But North Carolina is kind of a value state, and I definitely do believe that when you look at North Carolina, Cal Cunningham is going to narrowly lose to Tom Tillis because a lot of the ticket splitting that he was going to get is kind of evaded right now. I expect Trump to win by two to three. I expect Tillis to win by about a point. And yes, Tillis still could lose the election to Cunningham, but it's going to be much harder for Cunningham to win now. I do think Tillis is going to pick it off, which is a change since my last map. So now we go down to South Carolina. Lindsey Graham is probably going to win with ease. You see a lot of polling out of like Quinnipiac and some of these other Democrat internals having it like a two-point race or tied. That's not going to happen. Graham will win like 53 to 46 or so. Mathematically, I just cannot see Harrison winning. He's not exactly some type of Southern Democrat that would do well in the state. He's just running on an anti-Graham message. And while Graham is not that popular, a lot of people who do not like Graham are going to vote for him. Same thing with Mitch McConnell over in the state of Kentucky. Now, Georgia, I'm going to put both of these as likely. I do expect uh, Purdue to win by around five to six percentage points. I also expect the runoff to go Republican by a decent margin, especially because Republicans typically do well in runoffs in the state of Georgia. So I do believe both of those will go into the Republican column uh, in the likely column, but you never know. I mean, they could be lean, could be likely. Closer to lean than safe, of course, in both cases. So 47 to 44 for the Republicans. Republicans are closer to winning the Senate here, and we're going to go to the state of Kansas. Kansas, I'm going to put as likely red. I would make it safe, but I don't want to make the same mistakes I've made in the past when it comes to Kansas. But I do believe that even though some internal polling has had it close, you have to look at the big picture of things. A lot of undecideds in those polls. Donald Trump is on the top of the ticket. I do expect Trump to carry Roger Marshall. Trump will win the state by around 13, 14 points at a minimum. And I do believe that that will be enough to carry over Marshall by around six to seven percentage points or so in the state of Kansas. So 48 to 44, Republicans are in the lead here. We're going to go over to the state of Iowa. Iowa, I do have in the lean Republican column, although I do believe Ernst could win by a likely margin. Polling right now is Greenfield up by one to two percentage points, but at the same time, it's Iowa. Polls in Iowa have been absolutely awful at predicting the margins going back to 2014 or so and even before that. 
So right now, I do believe Trump is going to win the state by around seven points or so. And I do believe Ernst will win by around three to four. So 49 to 44. And we're going to be going over to the state of Montana, where Republicans are going to get to 50. As Steve Daines is going up against Steve Bullock, who has recently endorsed court packing, that is not going to play out well in the state of Montana. If you want to look at the CNN exit polls in 2018, and you exactly look at whether Tester's Kavanaugh vote was a factor, um, the people that said it was broke for Rosendale by nearly you know 25 to 30 percentage points or so. And you're going to see a similar effect happen here. Uh, in this election because court packing is extremely unpopular and Steve Daines was a much stronger candidate than Matt Rosendale is, especially because he is the current incumbent. Steve Bullock, again, statewide races are much different than national races and he did narrowly win his gubernatorial race back in 2016. This time it seems like he's not even trying to win. He's not even trying to appeal to the state of Montana. And for that reason, I'm going to put Montana as likely red, especially because a lot of polling has it as likely red too. So we'll just really have to wait and see. But I think Montana will go likely red. Similar thing with Alaska, where you do have Dan Sullivan going up against an independent and I do believe that he will win, but it is going to be by a narrower margin than the presidential level. Again, some of the presidential level polling actually has Alaska being just as close as the state of Texas is, but I just can't see that happening. We know how the early Alaska polls were. I think Obama was going to make a push for it back in 2008 or so before Palin was picked as McCain's VP as well as the fact that in 2016 there were some Republican internal polls released in October that had Hillary Clinton trailing Trump by just 3% or so. Trump will win Alaska with no problem. Again, Anchorage and Fairbanks are fairly strong Republican strongholds there, which is ironic because the more rural Native American areas are actually the bluer part of the state. They just don't control the state in terms of population. So we're at 51 to 44, and we can already project that the Republicans are going to hold the Senate here. If they win North Carolina, it's basically a done deal, especially if they win Iowa. So 51 to 44, now you have five states left here. Can Republicans make a push? Well, it's going to be hard. These are going to be states that are going to go more so in the Democrat column. Colorado, even though Hickenlooper kind of failed in the debate, I still expect him to win by around six to seven percentage points or so. Um, over Cory Gardner in the state of Colorado based on the fact that Trump is not going to help him too much. And he won in 2014 off a fluke in a red wave year with an extremely low turnout. It's not exactly going to play out well for him this time around, especially because the state has trended to the left significantly since then, especially in party registration. So 51 to 45, New Mexico, I'll also put in the likely D column. Republicans are running a popular weatherman, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be enough to take the state. I assume it will go Democrat by around seven to eight percentage points at the Senate level. And also in nearly every poll, we do see Ron Chetty outperforming Donald Trump, which is a good sign for him, especially if it is closer than expected. But it's probably not going to happen. So now we have three states left here. Arizona, I do expect Donald Trump to win the state of Arizona. I think he'll win it by like 1% or so. And I do think that Mark Kelly, however, will run ahead of Biden by around three to four points. McSally is in a much better position than she was before. But as of right now, I still see Kelly winning the state by a lean margin, more of like a cinema-esque margin compared to what I predicted him to win about a few months ago where I said he would win by eight points or so. I don't see that happening now. I think court packing being an issue, and I think the Supreme Court as a whole is going to energize more Republicans to come out and vote for McSally. Will it be enough? I'm not sure, but it's going to be lean D closer to tilt. So now you have two states left here. Jason Lewis up in Minnesota is a guy who is known for outperforming his polls. He did it in 2016. He did it in 2018. I expect him to do it again in 2020 as Minnesota could be a very close state. However, will Jason Lewis be able to beat Tina Smith? It's possible, but right now I say no. I think Lewis and Trump will probably end up losing the state by around 3%, even though I do expect them both to improve in the rural areas and the Iron Range. And that brings us to Michigan. Michigan is the last state here, and there's just a lot of conflicting data, but pretty much every poll has John James and Gary Peters both below 50, and also has John James outperforming Donald Trump, 
which is a fairly good sign, especially as I expect that to happen in places like Kent County and Oakland County and maybe even Ottawa County. Peters may be doing a little bit better than Biden in places like Macomb County because he does have a very big tie to the unions in that part of the state. So Michigan is going to be a state that is going to go down the wire. I'm going to let you guys call it in the comments because I think it's going to be a pure toss-up coin flip. Um, so that could go either way. I do think I have a very good feeling about James pulling it off in the end. The ad game is looking very strong in terms of attacking Gary Peters. I think a lot of these attacks are extremely effective, and I do think it's going to pull over some crossover voters in places like Oakland County who may not otherwise be voting for Donald Trump. So 51 to 48 is the final map here in the Senate. Michigan is a pure toss-up. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below. Comment down below and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. Become a member. Donate to the Patreon or subscribe. Star links in description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.